Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about heating koi ponds and covering up a koi pond and why it's such a waste of time and money. Stay tuned. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do this video, with, especially with all the um, mad price increases going up with energy costs. So you may already have a heater and you're unsure if it's um, a good idea not to use it if you can't afford to, or perhaps you're on the cusp of buying a pond heater for your pond and you're unsure of what it all involves. Okay, so if you're new to the channel, we're here to, to help you uh, make correct decisions, especially when it comes to buying equipment, um, pond heaters for one, a expensive to buy to start off with and also very very expensive to run unfortunately there's a lot of bad advice or misleading advice out there people saying you have to have a pond heater because your fish need to have one if you like the channel don't forget to hit the like button down at the bottom and also if you want to see some more like this hit subscribe and turn on notifications so we're doing the video in a few sections so hopefully at the end of it uh, we've convinced you that your bank account, especially your fish, will be a lot better off without actually buying and investing in a pond heater or pond covers. Before we get started, I just wanted to go into um, what our videos are, are for. So our videos, just make it clear to people, are for what the fish need. So just remember that, it's not what people want. So we did a video before about pond depth and we were saying like the fish don't need really deep ponds, like they don't because they live in all sorts of uh, depths of water across the world. Um, but then lots of people are like, oh no, no, the fish need to have it deep, and it's not that. So our videos are about what fish require and not what humans want. Do fish need to have the pond heated up? And no, they don't. Um, people may want it heated up because perhaps they can grow these fish faster than normal. Maybe that's the reason why. Um, but it's certainly a video where the fish do not need the water to be heated up. So we know lots of people already have pond heaters and, and they heat their ponds. So I mean, like, don't take offense by the video. Like, it's fine if that's what you want to do. Um, by all means, carry on. If you can afford to do it, and that's something that you want to do, carry on. There seems to be quite a few people that are obsessed with growing the fish really fast. So if you want to grow the fish fast, for instance, um, yes, they will grow faster in warmer water because they'll eat more and the metabolisms are working more. So um, yes, they will grow faster, but is it healthy for the fish? Absolutely not. I mean, what other animal out there do we manipulate the environment just so they can grow faster and bigger? It's not normal, it's not natural, and we would not recommend it. So this video is mainly for the people who get told that fish or carp, koi carp, uh, need a heater. I mean, like, wow, so I'll go through um, quite a few little points here and hopefully make it clear to um, to show you that they don't need a heater. It's, it's just a crazy thing that it gets sold across the country and even across the world that koi carp need heaters. I'm going to go through some points and I'll show you why they don't. Okay, so first, the first one's just an obvious one, so like the costs of heating a pond. So what are the costs to heating up a koi pond? Um, I'm going to use a, a a 2,000 gallon pond, for example, I'm not going to go into all the ins and outs, but just to give you a, a rough idea. So a 2,000 gallon pond, you're going to need roughly a two kilowatt heater. It's normally about a thousand gallons per kilowatt heater. So I know some heaters may be more efficient than others, but it's just to give you an idea as two kilowatts is two kilowatts, no matter how you look at it. So we're going to work it out based on a two kilowatt heater on a 2,000 gallon pond. Now, the main reason why I'm using a two kilowatt heater, for example, is that I actually have a two kilowatt heater in my garden, but it's not used for heating up uh, water for cold-blooded animals. It's for heating the air for mammals and my other mammal friends. How long How long do you have it on? I mean, if you, if you own a heater like this, maybe an hour, maximum when you're out there it just just depends but generally speaking i think we are very conscious the people who own a heater like this are of how long you have it on for because you know it's going to cost quite a lot now let's get back to the pond side of things so to heat a pond 2000 gallons uh, maybe say 10 degrees you need to have it on for about two months straight so imagine that this heater is now on for two months at 24 hours a day seven days a week day and night it does not go off wow now that is just something crazy can you imagine having that on for that much time that's literally what you were doing to heat just a small 
you know, 2,000 gallon pond is, isn't very big, to be fair. So it's a nice size pond, don't get me wrong, but two months straight, that heat has to be on just to keep that roughly 10 degrees. Wow. So I'm just gonna give you a costing idea. Now, these are the new prices. So this is with the energy cap. So obviously everyone knows what the sort of energy cap's going to. Um, so these are just some figures I got of one of the energy companies' websites. So they actually did a little article on how much will it cost to heat a, um, a house with a three kilowatt heat, you know, one of the little fan, fan heaters, whatever it was, but three kilowatts is three kilowatts. So uh, a three kilowatt heater, just to run for one hour with the new rates is one pound and eight pennies, just for an hour, okay? So if you worked it out on our two kilowatt heater, so call it 69 pence an hour. So a day, that's gonna cost 16 pounds per day to run that heater. Um, and that's a whopping 480 pounds a month to heat a 2,000 gallon pond um, for, well, about, for about, say, 10 degrees of, of heat a day. It's just crazy. So I'm not gonna go into it anymore. It's, it's, cost, it's, it's ex extortionate. So you're trying to heat a pond um, for a, a cold water fish that doesn't need heating. It blows my mind. Point two. What type of fish are koi and where do they naturally live or come from? Okay, so I know a lot of people think that koi are some random species of fish, but they're not. They're, they are just from the carp family. So um, they, they are carp um, and they always be carp. And where do you find them? So, you know, you find them all over, all over the world. And the climates in most of these countries are very um, extreme. So you have nice hot summers and extremely cold winters. And they all live in rivers, lakes, uh, muddy ponds, shallow ponds, deep ponds, um, they're not too fussy as long as the water quality is good. So lots of people think, like I said before, um, koi are these special species of fish, um, but like I said, they are carp, um, and also you probably couldn't get more of a mongrel carp if you tried, so they've been crossbred so many times, not interbred, crossbred, difference, and um, to get all the different colours and things, but they are still Carp. Now before I get comments about this, because I'll, I'll get these comments quite regularly, so a lot of koi people think that a carp that you find in a river or lake or whatever is a wild carp. Now yes, some rivers will have wild carp and some lakes will, or, or big ponds or whatever will have wild carp, but most of the carp that you find in lakes and ponds etc have been farmed and they've been put in there by people from a fish farm and these fish farms believe me or not actually breed carp exactly the same way that koi are bred and i think when people talk about wild carp basically when you when you go fishing in a, in a pond or lake or whatever um and you catch a carp that's a wild carp wow it is not where do you think all these carp come from these carp have been farmed from fish farms generally speaking, across um, or found in the UK. They are bred in the UK and then uh, the fishery will buy however many fish from the fish farm to stock his lake. So the wild carp is a bit of a myth. Yes, you do get wild carp, but the majority of the ones people talk about just because they catch them in, in a natural lake doesn't mean that they were spawned and bred in that lake. Trust me, most of them have been brought in because people want to catch big fish or whatever it might be. So they go to a fish farm and they buy larger fish and then they have them shipped over and introduced into their lake for people to catch. So you might be wondering, how do, how do I know this? Well, believe me or not, I actually used to work on a fish farm and also my college was a working um, carp farm and we used to breed carp. We have a brood stock, which is basically just your, your, your nice fish that you have that you want to breed and then have more nice fish like the brood stock, like the mums and dads and then sell them on. Now, when you do koi, it's exactly the same thing. The koi farmers have their brood stock, their best fish, and then they spawn them every year, and then they make little baby fish, grow them on, and sell them. There are three sections when you go to a fish shop of different types of fish. Okay, so this is what I always find quite funny. So, uh, when you go into a fish shop, pond shop, whatever it is, they usually have three sections of fish. So, um, the one, you've got um, tropical marine fish. So warm water marine fish and then you've got tropical freshwater fish so tropical warm water but freshwater fish um, and then <laughs> a 
you've got cold water fish. Now, you'll never guess what type of fish you'll find in the cold water fish section in any of the fish shops in the UK. Koi carp. Every single time. I've never seen a koi carp till this day in the tropical fish section. So the main point I'm trying to make is that if koi carp needed heating, every single time a dealer sold a koi carp, they'd be like, well, you, you know, you're gonna have to buy a heater because, you know, come the winter time under say whatever degrees, um, they won't survive. Then obviously every single person that owned a koi pond would have to have a heater because if you didn't have a heater, they would die. Could you imagine the amount of trouble the koi shops would get if the fish were dying because they didn't have a heater? So across the board, if koi carp needed to have a heater, every single pond in the world would have to have a heater in a country where the temperature dropped below that certain point. A lot of the koi dealers or, you know, the farmers in Japan, you know, they, they will heat the water up because, wouldn't you, if you if you had a um, a carp, uh, sorry, a, a koi farm or a, a, you're a koi dealer, you know, in the winter, if you didn't heat the, heat the pond, technically speaking, you're going to lose quite a lot of growth because obviously you're a business, so the bigger the koi are, the more you can sell them for, so it makes sense for them to heat the water. And again, in Japan, they only heat the water up so they can grow the fish and, and sell them and make more money. Point four, um, the koi dealers have got it wrong. Okay, so selling a, um, a heater to someone, again, is quite an easy sale. So obviously, you know, you've, you've built your pond and you've, you've bought some fish, or you're gonna buy some nice koi, um, and they're your pets, basically, aren't, aren't they? So you want your pets to be in an environment which is suitable and safe. And it's quite an easy one to pull on the heartstrings of people to say, oh no, you know, in the winter, you need to heat the pond water to keep your carp or your koi healthy. So you love your koi, you love your pets, um, and you want the best for them, but the koi dealers know that. They know that they like that you love them and you want the best for them. So it's quite an easy one for them to sell you that. So just bear that in mind. They're good salesmen. I actually watched a video yesterday of a koi dealer and he was going on about how heaters give more stability stability to a pond and stability is the key to keeping koi. Now, if you didn't know any better, you'd listen to him and you'd be like, oh, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. So stability, yes, 100%, I fully agree. Ponds need to be stable, but for koi, the so stable means the same, but koi and carp live in natural air environments where the water temperature fluctuates massively, so it's not stable. So that's not correct. So koi, carp, whatever you want to call them, the only stable thing that they need, they need the water quality to be stable, <laughs> nothing else. If the water quality is stable, they can live in water which, which has temperature fluctuations. Fluctuations in water, so a pond has a lot of water. It's very, very difficult for the water temperature in a pond to just change like that. That could actually kill the fish if it did do that, but it doesn't. So the air temperature in, in the evening might go up and down fairly quickly, but the actual temperature in the water isn't reacting as fast at all compared to the outside air temperature. The same koi dealer was going on about, um, it's really, really, really important to heat the pond because sometimes you get a cold snap and the uh, water temperature can drop like four or five degrees overnight. Now, I'm gonna tell you exactly now what he's done and he's actually 100% incorrect on this particular part. So this is something really cool and fascinating I find about water. You know, water's got many uh, amazing properties, um, but this is one of my favorite ones. So no matter how cold the air temperature gets outside, now this can be in any country, anywhere in the world. It can happen in any water, any water body. It can be in a lake, river, pond, whatever. At the bottom of the pond, will only ever be four degrees. That's the coldest it can get at the bottom of a pond, lake, or river. The reason for this, as water cools, at four degrees, water is its most dense. So if it's its most dense, obviously it's heavy, isn't it? So it actually sinks to the bottom and the colder layers rise up to the top. So just imagine, you know, cross section of a lake, frozen lake, Where's the ice on top? Where's the coldest parts on top? Where are the fish? At the bottom, it's warmer. So four degrees, the water actually sinks down to the bottom because it's, it's the heaviest and it's its densest. 
and the, the other colder layers actually move up to the top. So no matter what happens, that's science. You can't argue with that. That's what happens to water. Four degrees gets its most dense, it just simply sinks down to the bottom. So the bottom of the pond or lake or whatever it may be, is always going to be four degrees. You might be sat there thinking, and you know, it's hard to get your you get your head around, but I mean how cool is water? I mean, excuse the pun. But I think what happens a lot of people or the dealer, for instance, when they test their water, they're not actually testing it from the bottom of the pond. I mean, most people have their silly, silly little floating thermometers. I mean, you pull it out, oh, it's like one degree, you know, but it's not. Down at the bottom, it's warmer. You may be thinking, okay, so if it's four degrees at the bottom, what happens when I've got my pump down there or a bottom drain pulling the water from, circulating around and going back in? It actually also makes no difference. It will still be four degrees. I actually found this video of this man in North, North America, I think, so he gets a like, really, really, really cold winters, like makes our winters look like, you know, the Sahara. Basically, what he was doing, he was pumping the water from his pond um, around the greenhouse to water his plants, and then it would go back into the pond. And before he didn't have a pump in the pond, the, the pond and everything was just frozen solid. And But then what he did, he pumped the water around, and he couldn't understand that obviously the water wasn't freezing so he decided to um, to monitor it he did a few like i said before a few um, tests on a graph over an eight day period where he tested the outside temperature the inside temperature water temperature um, and a few other things and everything else is like a yo-yo going up and down with the temperatures obviously and um, the the only constant temperature in the whole of the thing that he was testing was the um, the pond water and that was over four degrees um, I think the outside air temperature got to like minus 10 um, and the inside temperature overnight got to minus three um, but the water temperature didn't change how cool is that crazy stuff but um, I'll leave a link in the description below for that video if you want to watch it for yourself point five koi need seasons koi carp they need seasons so every year naturally they go through a season so whichever country is in I could keep going on about they have a cold season and miraculously they survive so why is that so um, they don't hibernate they go into a, um, a state called torpor which basically means they uh, their mental and physical abilities um, go completely dormant and they don't do anything and and then as soon as the water warms up they come out of that stage and they start feeding again and getting on with their lives so they've been doing it for all this time why on earth do we think we can mess with that and change it let them do what they do naturally they will be 100 percent okay why would they not be why would all of a sudden I mean just because they're in your little pond at home that they're not going to do what they naturally would do okay the last point this is um, about parasites so i'll do a, a more in-depth video about parasites but generally speaking um like koi or carp uh in the winter parasites especially the parasites that affect these fish will go dormant just like the fish do so the cold water will actually make these parasites lay dormant but then the problem we go along and go no 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 we'll heat the heat the water up then all you're doing is creating an environment where the parasites can live and thrive so they like the water warmer you've warmed it up technically speaking there's going to be more parasites um, in your pond that could cause problems with your fish instead of just maybe say in the spring you're giving them the chance to do it all year round you might be wondering well how do i stop the parasite so like carp and, and koi and most fish they have parasites naturally they always get parasites it's quite normal for them to have them on them what isn't normal is for um a, a, sorry an infestation of parasites the koi or the carp whatever can't fend them off now why can't they fend them off they can't fend them off because of water quality problems so if there's water quality problems it means the fish may get stressed the immune systems will drop and they become prone to infections or infestations. If your fish are healthy um, and well nourished, after a nice rest in the winter, come the spring, they'll have a good immunity and they'll be able to naturally fend those parasites off. Yes, you might see them flash for a little bit, but I guarantee you they will sort themselves out. So in a nutshell, if koi needed the water to be heated, it would have to be heated. You can't have some living in heated ponds and the others not. So everyone who doesn't have a heater, their fish should technically die, but they don't. Okay, so just a quick one on, on pond covers now. Pond covers, I mean, wow, just take them off. 
If you don't need a heater, you certainly don't need pond covers. I know why people put pond covers on if you're heating the water, because it helps keep that heat in, considering you just spent a fortune to heat the water up. So I do get that. But if you don't need a pond heater, you certainly don't need pond covers. Take them off. You've built a lovely pond that looks, looks amazing. Um, but then come the winter, you cover it up. You can't even see what's down there. It's important to actually uh, be able to see and monitor your fish if there's any problems. How are you going to see it with a pond cover on? Take them off. It must be an absolute pain in the arse having to put pond covers on and off each year. I mean, I, I do understand if you've got problems with predators or whatever, that's the only reason I'd say you'd ever need to have a pond cover if your fish are getting pestered from animals um, trying to come in and eat them. So, yeah, if you, if you have that problem, yeah, pop a pond cover on, but don't put them on to try and heat the water up for your fish. So some overall good advice in general, try not to mess around with animals and their natural habitats. If, if they have a season, let them have a season. Um, they'll be absolutely fine. With fish, especially carp and koi carp in general, all they need, I can't stress it enough, is they just need the water quality to be healthy. Um, and keep that, and they're really easy to look after, and you'll get enjoyment of, of them day in and day out, every single year, I guarantee you that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you, if you have, click on the like button down below. If you want to subscribe, click that too and turn on notifications for more. Thank you for watching.